5G is so dependent on software and virtualization. You know, wh wh how, how are we seeing SDN and NFE drive this more cost-effective and scalable deployments? Well, I think if we look at 5G, it's the first generation of network where if we look at it from a distance, right, it'll be a fully virtualized distributed cloud. It'll be heterogeneous in the sense that there'll be still be network uh, workloads running on bare metal. There'll be virtualization containers. But what it is, is an infrastructure that fully leverages all the innovation that comes from the IT industry. And that has actually driven a lot of the innovation we've seen on the internet to date. We are now set up to take that straight into the networks and use all the technologies, all the methodologies that have generated all that innovation and bring it into the networks and, and then through that out to the uh, customers of the carriers as well. Yeah, and, and I think Klaus as well, we, we have to move fast. You know, agility, especially when we talk about cloud economics, is really, really critical. Um, you know, a lot of the cloud service providers that have brought, the, I suppose, the more innovative services to market have done so in a very, very rapid scale. And I've been willing to take risks with regards to monetization, right, where, the, you know, the fail fast mentality as well. So we're seeing a lot of that cloud-like um, skill sets, if you will, transferring from IT and enterprise and cloud across into telco and comm service providers today as well. It's really, really exciting. And, and is this one of the, the areas being where open source will play a major role? Open source is, is, uh, has, has a crucial ro role to play in, in, in accelerating innovation. I, I happen to, to be involved in open source um, through Intel and, and through, through some of the communities out there as well. And it's amazing to see the passion around innovation that exists in the open source community. And you know, open source doesn't mean free, and I've said this before, you, know, you still need to take um, the code that's upstreamed and, and all the collaboration that happens and, 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 and harden that into products. So you need a very, very strong ecosystem. The other thing that open source does, it kind of brings the communities together. It becomes mm -hmm. very, very democratized. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and there's an exciting level of evolution of, of innovation going on in open source as well. The other thing that open source does as well, Guy, is that it, it helps the, uh, uh, the operators understand where they can scale their innovation and their services as well. And it creates this really good dichotomy of, 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 of service innovation. Will, um, you're agreeing again uh, yeah. about the, 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 the role open source is going to play. It does seem that the innovation is, is there. We now need to, to harness this. It is, and you know, I, I've spent quite a bit of time with the Linux Foundation and, and their networking team. And what I find really compelling about open source is that when you look at a lot of these uh, working groups, ONAP and and others, you're you're bringing traditionally you know competitors together, um, and there, there's a mutual cooperation. And you know, I believe that open source has the potential to really sort of supercharge that whole development cycle. So. Completely agree with um, with bringing that you know open source is really transforming not only on the service provider operator side of the the fence, but also it's it's being very transformative um, in in the enterprise as well with with, with Wi-Fi and you know traditional um, routing solutions. And, and and a really good example of, of that of that sort of collaboration, a guy and Will and Klaus that's going on in the market. You mentioned the Linux Foundation um, is, is around the the movement towards a common NFEI. You know a really uh, let's say, a common understanding of what NFI, NFEI really needs to be. Um, and that's a really, really important uh, movement. The other, another really great example is what we're seeing in the Linux Foundation, the networking side as well, is, is around verification around VNFs, right? Where, where we can get to a stage where we can offer tools to the industry where VNF vendors can come in and then benchmark and optimize their solutions on that common infrastructure. So that's, that's, not a, that's, that's, that's a community activity based around open source, but not necessarily open source, right? So it's, mm -hmm. it's creating that synergy between the traditional infrastructure providers and the VNF vendors to really accelerate time to market as well. Can I move on to another area that's getting a lot of developer interest and, and has a lot of application with 5G, and, and that's artificial intelligence, AI. Klaus, what is HPE doing specifically with, with AI, given recent talk around closed loop automation uh, to make our networks and new 5G networks smarter, more self-healing, et cetera? Well, HP has invested heavily in our InfoSight, which is a product that helps automate data centers and maintenance of those based on machine learning and uh, AI. And we are extending that out into the distributed infrastructure of the telco networks, where that's even more critical as you look at edge locations where you want to be able to predict the next time you're servicing that edge location that you might want to upgrade some servers or uh, preventatively uh, actually 
uh, replace discs or whatever so you avoid a, a failure in the future. And, and Will, could I just just uh, come to you and uh, talk about AIs as as well? And I, you know, what what are you picking up um, as an analyst from um, the the work that's going on, especially as you know, five G needs a lot of um, a lot of real estate, a lot of edge locations. There's going to be locations there that are going to have to operate independently or uh, as well, very difficult to get to. So so you know, yeah. are, are we seeing sufficient um, work done on AI for five G? Um, I think we are seeing that, you know, and, you know, and one of the challenges, you know, AI has become sort of a whitewash term. Everyone claims it. And when you, when you kind of double click into it, um, a lot of times there isn't a lot of depth. Um, where I believe um, HPE is, you know, very well positioned is, you know, with, with uh, the data lake, you know, um, AI is only as good as, uh, you know, the training behind it. You need good data to train it. You know, when you look at the depth and breadth of what HPE is doing, um, you know, not only on the service provider side, but on the enterprise side, you you marry Aruba uh, networks into that as well. And you've got a very deep data lake. So, you know, the company can do something very, very meaningful with that data and apply AI intelligently. You know, one good example, um, Aruba, uh, several months back, um, announced a, a green AP feature tied to a Wi-Fi access point. We're kind of going a little off subject from 5G here, but... But um, they deployed AI basically to help with the power management, and that's a real, app, you know, applicable use case, you know, within within the Wi-Fi space. And I believe we'll see a lot of that, you know, as 5G rolls out. Now, bear in mind, I mean, we're we're very nascent into the deployment of of 5G, so I think we'll see more development and more trends with AI um, as these networks deploy globally. Yeah, and, and, and but I think and, there's and, an important point there that um, you said you were going off. Uh, topic a little bit from 5G. I think that's the very essence of 5G that we start to forget about it as a as a evolution of the network, but rather look at what is the innovation that meaningfully can be placed in in new places for customers, in you know business models, uh, and that's what 5G does. And then we can start thinking, okay, where could we now use AI? But we couldn't use AI before. And that's really the discussion about how this, at the end of the day, will create monetization for the for the carriers and the telco. Yeah, I think I think uh, people position AI and five G together, and I actually think we shouldn't. I think it's AI and 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 the edge, right? To me, mm -hmm. the opportunity around automation, and in fact, actually, auto automation, I would say, will Klaus is probably still the biggest challenge the industry has to overcome, right? And and the role of AI that plays in that to get those optimized networks functioning correctly is going to be very, very critical. Um, Will mentioned earlier on some of, some of, the, some of the key um, use cases. You know, when we see in, in, in areas like industrial or even in retail and the adoption of 5G, that automation for IoT services is going to be fundamental. And it can only exist um, in and with artificial intelligence as well.